Good morning. Good morning to this uh, third day of the Research and Innovation Days. And we start with a particularly exciting award ceremony, the European Innovation Council Prize for Affordable Tech for Humanitarian Aid. This is a prize which was uh, co-created by Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for uh, Research, Innovation, Culture, Education and Youth, and by Janis Lenarcic, Commissioner for Crisis Management and, of course, dealing with humanitarian aid. I'm really delighted to welcome you this morning. We had many applications, 45. The price is 1 million euros. It's a very big price. The purpose of it is, of course, to complete the development and bring these innovation into the world. And I'm very excited to find out who the five finalists are. But before we do that, Commissioner Gabriel, please. Good morning. Thank you very much, Jean-Éric. Indeed, that is a great way to start this third day of our Research Innovation Days with a great opportunity to highlight the great solutions that innovators in Europe and elsewhere are bringing to the most vulnerable people in our planet. And I'm also very happy to do this alongside with my colleague Yanis Lenartic, the Commissioner for Crisis Management, with whom we have developed this prize together. Well, this prize is a part of a series of prizes that the Commission awards to incentivize or reward research and innovation on various specific themes. Some of you may recall that the first such prize for innovative vaccine technology that was awarded in 2014 to a then not so well known German biopharmaceutical company called CureVac for its innovative messenger RNA vaccine technology. You may also know that the Commission and the European Investment Bank, we are continuing to support CureVac in the actual con context tackling COVID-19. Well, this EIC Horizon Prize are part of our pilot phase of the European Innovation Council. And the aim is really to trigger innovations in areas where important societal problems need to be addressed. These prizes call for breakthrough solutions that demonstrate their feasibility or potential so that innovators can take them quickly to the market and reach those in need. Horizon Europe will include an innovative Europe pillar with new feature for enabling innovators of Europe to become world leader in cutting edge technologies, but also for innovation to be nurtured, scaled and exploited in Europe. This prize represents the Commission's commitment to promote innovation and technologies that can improve people's lives, in particular, the most vulnerable. These great innovations show how technologies such as sensors, solar panels, batteries, drones, combined with digital technologies like the Internet of Things, can be combined and adapted to help people in need to empower them to ultimately improve their quality of life. And the solutions put forward also demonstrate that technologies can be applied through a frugal innovation approach, meaning in a simple, inclusive, sustainable and affordable manner. I'm very pleased that these prizes are being awarded to both well-established organizations in humanitarian aid, but also to young, innovative companies that are dedicated to improving people's lives. It is also encouraging to see that these organizations are not only coming from European Union. Thank you. Maria, thank you very much. Uh, and I pass over directly, Janis Nacic, to you. Um, thank you, uh, Jean-Éric, um, dear colleagues, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a really an honor and pleasure for me to be here with you, with Commissioner Gabriel and yourself. Uh, since the beginning of uh, its mandate, the European Commission has uh, placed a strong focus on uh, incorporating research and innovation into every arm of its work. And the need for innovation has become even uh, more pressing with the COVID pandemic, uh, because this pandemic has led bare the world's fragilities and exacerbated existing vulnerabilities. Uh, furthermore, uh, climate change remains an ever-present threat to our planet and its population. And natural and man-made disasters 
continue to harm, harm our most vulnerable communities. As policymakers, therefore, we must face these challenges together with entrepreneurs and innovators. And we want to foster culture of innovation that will help create high-tech solutions for our most pressing global challenges. And this also applies to our humanitarian work. We want to deliver humanitarian aid in a more efficient and more cost-effective manner. With the latest innovations in technology, we can seek efficiency savings and reduce operating costs while also increase access to vulnerable communities. Innovation is also a very useful form to encourage partnerships between the private sector and humanitarians, and we want to embrace this as we go forward. And the EIC Prize is one important step in this direction. Uh, it has been a very important development for uh, the Commission to directly support humanitarian innovators. We do it with the perspective to encourage innovation that benefits the whole humanitarian community to address the rising needs of the most vulnerable. And at this point, I would also like to congratulate the five winners. Uh, your innovative spirit is shaping Europe and the world. And without such forms of entrepreneurship, we would not be able to find new ways of supporting those who are most in need. As humanitarians, that should always be our goal. And I would like to thank you for your dedication and commitment to this important cause. And I'll hand back to you, uh, jean -Eric. Yanis. Yanis, thank you very much. As is always the case for the European Innovation Council, we see when we launch calls or prizes that there is so much innovation, Maria, in Europe. We are always uh, overwhelmed with great ideas and uh, great uh, teams are coming forward uh, to seek uh, support from the European Innovation Council. And that was also the case for this um, uh, Affordable Tech Humanitarian Aid Prize. We had uh, 52 applications. Uh, Twelve uh, of these teams passed the thresholds and there were hearings held um, in Brussels. And we will now uh, show a short video with these 12 runners-up and we'll find out who the five winners are then from the two commissioners. Very good. So here you had a glimpse of, of, what, we, of what we saw and uh, the, the teams we met. So I wish uh, them all, of course, uh, a, a lot of uh, success in deploying these 12 great innovations. There will be five which will have a, a little bit of a stronger kick today with the prize. Maria, over to you for the first. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. So now it's a great honor for me to present the first award in the first category, Shelter and Related Assistance. And the prize goes to Lumkani LHP from South Africa. And let's see how they work in a short video. The challenge of informal settlement fires is something that occurs in every developing nation in the world, wherever we have high density urban informal settlements. There are fires that destroy tens of thousands of homes in a single day, and these are occurring on a daily basis around the world. Mkani is a project that exists to mitigate the loss of life and property caused by informal settlement fires around the world. And what we've designed is an early warning system that creates a community-wide alert as soon as a fire starts, and at the same time uh, sends its message out to all neighboring fire detectors within 60 meters, creating a community-wide call to action. 
At the same time, we sent SMSs to the neighbors and specifically the homeowners so that even if they're at work or elsewhere, they know that there's a fire in their home so they can protect their family, their possessions and their home itself. Along with this, we also provide the opportunity to purchase a cover that allows people the finances they need to rebuild in the event of a fire actually occurring. To date, Lumkani is in 40,000 homes around the world. We've covered over 6 million euros with our fire cover and paid out 140,000 euros in claims to date. In the last year, 94% of fire alerts that came through our system, the community reported that the Lumkani system helped to mitigate the loss of life and property in those instances. Well, congratulations. Representing Lumkani today, with us we have François Petousis, Director for Humanitarian Projects. François, I'm very pleased to hand over virtually the award and that's my honor now to give you the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an, obviously a tremendous honor to be provided this award for the work we do. Uh, we're incredibly passionate about uh, making people's homes safer and more resilient in the most vulnerable communities on our planet. And, and yeah, we're just so excited about what this award will, will create in terms of the opportunities we have to expand the work that we do. Uh, as a direct result of this prize, we're going to be installing our system into 30,000 high fire risk homes across South Africa. Um, in our country in, in the last decade, uh, people living in informal settlements have lost 80 million euros worth of property. And the project we plan to do hopefully will create a really large impact in, and dent that challenge. And beyond that, we really just really hope that we can use this as a springboard to expand our team and expand the regions and context that we cover. We know this challenge of fires is truly an international one across the globe. And yeah, just a massive thank you to the whole EIC team for this opportunity. And we can't wait to, to get started and put it to great use. So thank you. Thank you very much, Francois. Congratulations again to the entire team, because always good to know that there is a lot of people behind the project. Our best wishes for the further implementation of this life-saving innovation. And now I will give the floor to my colleague, Lenarcic, please. I am uh, pleased to present the, the award for the affordable high tech for humanitarian aid in the second category, which is water, sanitation and hygiene. The prize goes to Lora One Monitoring, developed by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. This innovation offers real-time solutions for water tanker and water reservoir remote monitoring to improve the effectiveness of water tracking programming globally. You will see how it works in the short video that follows. Long distances to water points can put women and girls at risk of sexual violence. Long distances also mean missed opportunities for children to go to school to ensure immediate access to water, UNHCR has often managed large emergency water deliveries by truck, but monitoring water supplies in complex emergency settings is very challenging. Existing monitoring solutions use paper-based systems. In complex emergencies, when hundreds of thousands of refugees depend on us for access to water, speed is of the essence. So for this reason, we have identified an innovative solution. We have harnessed an emergency technology, which is simple, yet very effective in remotely monitoring water provisions in real time. We can analyze, anticipate, and quickly take action to ensure that refugees have access to water. This solution increases accountability, transparency, and cost savings in the long term. Representing the UNHCR today with us is Mr. Gonzalo Vargas Losa, representative for European Union Affairs, who I am very pleased to Welcome and to hand over virtually again the award. Uh, congratulations and uh, you have the floor, Gonzalo. 
Good morning, uh, commissioners, and thank you, Commissioner Lenercic, for presenting UNHCR with this uh, prestigious uh, award. I'm very honored to accept it on behalf of my frontline colleagues who are tuning in to the ceremony from all, all corners of the world this morning. We are very grateful to the EU for its long-standing, steadfast partnership and its investment in innovation. As you know, the demands on the humanitarian system have never been greater, and so we will rely on technology and innovation to help us discover creative solutions together. This award is key to finding such solutions. As you would have seen in the video, in emergencies, we at UNHCR need to swiftly scale up our response to meet the needs of refugees. Indeed, the onset of the pandemic has tested us all in different ways, and refugees and displaced people are amongst the hardest hit. Annually, we support 9 million refugees providing water, sanitation, and hygiene services. Many live in parts of the world impacted by conflict, compounded by risks such as flooded and limited road access. This awarded technology, the LoRaWAN monitoring project, helps us overcome many of these hurdles by providing real-time data. But more can be done, and with the funds from this award, we will continue our expansion to other refugee operations, like Bangladesh. We will also seek to replicate this technology in other sectors, such as energy and the environment. This will ensure that irrespective of conflict or pandemics, refugees and displaced people can enjoy their basic human right, the right to water. Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, let me finish by quoting Kiden Rose, a South Sudanese refugee in Uganda who sums it up best. She says, water is part of life. Without water, you cannot survive. Thank you for this award. We are very honored. Thank you, Gonzalo. And again, congratulations uh, for this uh, wonderful innovation. And greetings to all UNHCR colleagues, especially all those on the front line. It is particular pleasure that this award goes to UNHCR, our trusted and key partner. Now back to you, Maria. Thank you very much, Janet. Third category, energy. And the winner is Bright Move, which was invented by Bright Products, SME from Norway. Great project, Bright Move provides refugees with light and energy. In a refugee situation, the place where a refugee camp is being set up is very often very remote. There is no access to infrastructure. The first things you're trying to solve is safety, is food, is shelter, it's healthcare, and then comes light. For all of us, light means that we feel safe. The next thing you want to solve is that people can find out what's happening. And there the mobile phone comes into play. It gives you the opportunity to find out where is your family? What is happening at home? Can you return? That's why access to electricity is so important in the early stages of a refugee situation. Bright Move is a multifunctional solar product providing 80 hours of light and mobile phone charging. We have made it as compact as possible. It's easy for people to transport with them if they need to. Once it's empty, you can just put it out in the sun again and then you're ready to go another 80 hours. The combination with the quality in the product and the fact that you don't need to put up any infrastructure to make it actually work makes the product very affordable in a refugee situation.
Congratulations again to the winner, Bright Move. And as I already said it at the beginning, that was invented by an SME coming from Norway, Bright Products. And today with us, it's Mrs. Sel McFine, CEO of Bright Products. Thank you very much for this quite impressive product because we can see that we are living in a world where smartphones are everywhere. There is solar energy, so now, thanks to your, your innovation, we can see how this innovation can really change the lives of a lot of people. Please, Selma, the floor is yours. Good morning, and thank you so much for this wonderful prize. On behalf of everyone here in Bright, I would like to uh, thank the commissioner as well as the committee selecting us inside this important category. To build a product like this, you need a lot of people to work together. Um, the Bright team with Bright Partners, our customers out there helping us uh, with the information on how to develop this product. And we built it all together. And I'd like to extend my thanks to all the people who has actually been part of this. And now to the prize money. The two major programs we want to lift with the prize money is two things. First of all, we'd like to build a container of the MOVE product, which can serve 26,000 families and actually impact more than 100,000 people in a refugee situation. The second part of this uh, prize money, and just as important, we'd like to build a repair and recycling program for our products, and which hopefully, and which is the target, will enable us to give new life to 100,000 products that is already out there. So again, thank you for this wonderful prize. Thank you very much, Selma. Bright ideas need bright partners. And thank you very much already for the follow-up of your project. I would like to wish again my best wishes to continue to provide light and energy in people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Janet, it's up to you. Thank you. We now move to the fourth category, which is health and medical care. And the winner is Terefa, which is developed by the French non-profit organization Handicap International. What is Terefa? Well, it's something that provides affordable, high-quality prosthetic and also orthotic devices produced through digital and three-dimensional scanning and printing technologies. And these offer huge potential for bringing prosthesis to hard-to-reach people and could offer significant cost savings, not to mention reducing waste material. And you will see it now in the video. Eighty percent of people living with physical disability are based in developing countries. And only five to 15 percent of these people have benefited from orthopedic services. TELIFA means tele-rehabilitation for all. It's a project developed by Handicap International to use digital technologies and 3D printing to feed people suffering with physical disability in remote and difficult contexts such as humanitarian crisis. With the use of the digital technology, we can go on-site to take proper measurements and then we can produce material in another place which is quite important in humanitarian situations where the services could have been destroyed and professionals could not work anymore or population could have been forced to move in an area where there are no services at all. With the Terrafa project, we expect to provide more prosthetic and orthotic devices to more people. Then they will increase their independence. We expect them to have more opportunity to work. They will have more opportunity to go to school. They will be seen for what they are rather than through their impairments. This is truly amazing uh, innovation and uh, representing Handicap International today is Mr. Manuel Patrouillard, Director General of the Federation Handicap International, who I'm very pleased to welcome here and hand over the award virtually and also give you the floor. Thank you very much, Commissioner. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends, I'm very deeply honored, actually, as the CEO of HI, to uh, collect this prize on behalf of our teams. We have been honored, in fact, with two awards, uh, which is a great acknowledgement for our colleagues all over the world. As you know, HI was founded in 82 in the Cambodian refugee camps in Thailand. A great many of the refugees were mine victims. And by using bamboo processes, we were able to fit amputees in areas without suitable workshops. As we grew, innovation remained part of our DNA. Uh, for example, we introduced the prosthesis kit for emergency orthopedic fitting after natural disasters. And of course, we now use 3D technology. Uh, the TerraFab project uh, reflects this desire to improve the quality and impact of our response using uh, accessible technologies. We mentioned frugal innovation several times in this, in this show, but uh, we use actually uh, light scanning devices on 3D printers uh, of the shelf. For us, innovation is not just for specialists. Innovation must be part of our culture. It's a way for everyone in our, in our organization to contribute to overcome our constraints. And this global award reinforces our decision to make innovation the cornerstone of our development. And here comes my announcement. We have therefore decided to continue along this path of uh, frugal innovation by using the recent price money to set up a humanitarian fund for innovation and continue, thanks to the EU, to uh, develop this frugal innovation journey. Thank you very much for this prize, uh, and uh, I hope that we will come to this uh, forum again with a further innovation in the future. Let's hope so, Manuel. Thank you very much, and uh, best wishes for the uh, development of this innovation. It can really help improve lives of many people. Thank you. And now, back to you, Maria. Thank you very much, Yanis. And we have now the fifth category, the open category, and the winner is Odyssey 2025, also developed by the French non-profit organization Handicap International. And we can see now with the short video how they function. Minefields, contaminated area are the result of a conflict. Five years, ten years later, there is still stigma of this conflict and people are still psychologically harmed by the presence of those explosive devices. Odyssey 2025 is a project implemented by Handicap International with the aim to achieve the promises we made to make this world mine-free by 2025. We're using consumer small drones to accelerate the release of land that has been contaminated by landmines and explosive remnant of war to local affected communities. So the impact of the solution is really important in terms of cost, efficiency and safety. With drones, the demining operations have access to additional data of a dangerous area they need to clear and without entering it. So they can plan better, they can be more prepared for the deployment of the teams on the ground. So potentially, we're hoping that all the mining operations will use drones in the future as a survey tool. Odyssey 2025 is giving back school to children. It's giving back hospital to the population. It's also about reducing the cost of clearance operation and also ensuring our colleagues, the miners, to work in more safe uh, condition. Congratulations. Representing Handicap International today and with us is Mrs. Kera Jury, Handicap International's project manager in Chad. Kera, virtually, it's my honor to hand over the, the award and now I'll give you the floor. Thank you very much. Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, friends, it is my great pleasure to accept on behalf of Handicap International Humanity and Inclusion, this award for our Odyssey 2025 project on the use of drones in mine action. I would like to make special mention of our man clearance team with whom I work in chat under trying conditions to make the country safer. I would like to thank as well the EU delegation in Jamena to have led us to link this innovation project with clearance operations. And of course, thank you to the mine action authorities for their tireless support. This award recognizes the hard work done by HI and John Fardwis for Mobility Robotics, our project partner, whose experience and expertise were instrumental during 18 months of testing. 
By training six Chilean B miners, we have created a national drone capacity, autonomous and ready to be deployed. When they started, they had no drone experience. Now they are pilots and can produce their own maps. Proof that this innovative project can be accessed by all and reproduced in other contexts. An innovation is never an end in itself. It must evolve over time. First, the Odyssey 2025 project is a tremendous asset in achieving a mind free world. Thank you. Thank you, Kera, and our best wishes for the dissemination of this important innovation because your target is quite high. It's to have a free, mind free world. So, thank you very much for helping us to reach this. Now, that's the end of the ceremony. Thank you very much uh, for attending. I would like to say just a few words. First of all, again, congratulations to all our winners because these tech-based innovations are definitely our better response in humanitarian end and they improve people's lives and my wish is really to continue to see them successfully tested not only in real conditions but to get further deployed in other settings. Thank you very much Commissioner Lenarcic, that was a great pleasure. Thank you for your engagement, for your vision, for your commitment. Thank you very much DG Echo. we have an excellent cooperation and now, what I would like really to say again, congratulations to all the winners and there. <laughs>